Hello and welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're really happy to have you with us tonight. As we get started, we have a few extra reminders for housekeeping as we're getting going. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see and or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week's time as well. To sign up for more sessions or to watch this presentation or any other presentations recordings, please um, go to strivescan.com slash Texas. Um, I'm excited to welcome our schools today. We'll be hearing from Bradley University, DePaul University, James Madison University, Quincy University, the University of Illinois at Chicago, and the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I'd like to turn it over to our first school, Bradley University. Oops. Sorry about that, you guys. Hang on one second. Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Tony Chandler and I am your admission counselor whoops, at Bradley University. And uh, Bradley is an independent private university. We are located in uh, Peoria, Illinois, smack in the middle of the Midwest. And um, really great location. Best news for my Texas students, there are direct flights out of DFW that go straight into Peoria. So it's actually really easy to get to us, but also pretty simple to make a little road trip to Chicago or St. Louis to catch a baseball game or check out the museums there as well. But Peoria is a really wonderful city to start your college experience. Um, so what makes Bradley kind of special? Um, well, a lot, but I think when it gets right down to it, it's size. So we're a very unique size at 6,000 students. So there's certainly schools that are much, much larger. There are schools that are much, much smaller. And we've kind of taken the best of both worlds and put it together at Bradley. So we offer our students a ton of choices, choices of majors, activities, things to do, um, people to know, internships, study abroad, division one athletics, all that good stuff, but on a much more personal level, much like a really small school would have. So it really does work um, when we say we're mid-sized, but it makes a really big difference for our students. Um, the average class size at Bradley is 17 students and 100% of our classes are taught by faculty. You came to Bradley to learn from Dr. Somebody. We are gonna give you Dr. Somebody um, from your freshman year going forward. And that really makes a huge difference as well. Um, Bradley is made up of five colleges. Um, certainly the Foster College of Business has some amazing offerings and I've got to give a little shout out to our professional sales team. They won the national championship today in collegiate professional sales um, presentations um, and we are really proud of them for that. So again, a real world experience for our Foster College students. And the Slane College has all the traditional fine arts areas, um, music, visual arts and theater, but I think it's those off the beaten path programs like game design, like sports communication, animation, um, music business that really attracts a lot of Texas students to look at Bradley. Um, education and health sciences, definitely the most popular program over there is our direct admit nursing program. So it's very different than what you would find here in Texas um, in that if you're admitted to Bradley as a nursing student, you are a nursing major. We do not stop you, retest you, or relocate you. And you would actually start your clinical rotations your sophomore year at one of the three major hospitals in Peoria. Of course, if you ask somebody in Illinois what they know about Bradley, um, they're probably going to mention engineering. Um, and this is not Caterpillar the insect, you guys. This is Caterpillar the Fortune 50 company. And um, their world headquarters are right down the street from us. And you can imagine as an engineer, this is powerful stuff. But, um, you know, to go work for a major manufacturing company, but it's also great for our accounting majors and public relations and all sorts of other majors that can take advantage of Caterpillar's presence in Peoria. 
Liberal arts and sciences encompasses about half the majors and a lot of minors at Bradley. I have a student from Dallas who is a double business major in management and marketing, but he picked up a philosophy minor, which I think is really cool. Um, we also have women and gender studies and neuroscience. So a lot of cool offerings over in um, liberal arts and sciences. Of course, sometimes our students come to us and they're not really sure what they want to study, and that's okay. Um, for our undecided students, um, we have the academic exploration program that allows us to work with them um, to help them figure out, hey, what am I good at? What do I like? What's out there that maybe I never thought about? Um, our campus is pretty compact, which is super convenient. Um, both our freshmen and sophomores are living on campus, so you can imagine rolling out of bed and getting a class in five to 10 minutes. That's a good deal. And of course, a big part of the Bradley experience is student life. We have everything from intramural sports to Greek life to, um, you know, travel clubs and ROTC, religious student organizations, just a little bit of everything. And of course, it would not be complete without the cereal eating club. And no, I'm not joking about that. We really have that. Um, we do offer some really wonderful scholarships. All Texas students get an automatic $4,000 scholarship and we award merit-based scholarships as a part of the application process. Those are usually between 14 and $20,000 per year. Um, you can start your application July 1st before your senior year utilizing the common application or the Bradley application. They're exactly the same. Um, we'd love to have you come do a visit, but we're also doing some really amazing virtual programming and you can hop on our website and check those out. Um, spring is a great time to just sit back and do some virtual visits with us. Um, we'd love to have you. This is my contact information. If you guys have any questions, I would love to visit with you. I'm based in Dallas and work with the entire state of Texas. So I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you guys so much. Great, thank you so much, Tony, for sharing more about Bradley. Our next school tonight will be DePaul University. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda Chavez, and I am one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admission for DePaul University. I um, just wanted to say hello and welcome. Um, so a little background about DePaul. Um, we are the largest Catholic university in the U.S., um, but funny enough, we were one of the first universities in Chicago to open admission to women, people of color, and the Jewish community. So for the longest time in Chicago, if you you're one of the three, all three, DePaul was the only school you can attend. So even though we are a Catholic university, our Jewish life is actually um, pretty large and almost as large as our Catholic life. Um, so if any of you are not Catholic or you know scared to hear that, do not worry. We will not force you to go to mass or anything like that. Um, it's more so about our mission and value, right? Um, social justice, thinking about those that are marginalized. That's really what we focus on. Our primary mission is teaching and service here at DePaul. And even though we're a larger private university, our average classroom size is 22. So you're never going to be in huge lecture halls. Your professors are going to be professors, right, and not teaching assistants. So really some things to know um, and just how much we've grown, right? We used to be known as the little school under the L in Chicago back in 1898. Um, and now we just continue to grow. These are our 10 schools and colleges. These last two, you don't necessarily have to worry about for right now, unless you are thinking about going to law school. We do have a 3-3 BAJD program if you want to do an accelerated program. Um, theater school and the School of Music are both conservatories. Our theater school is among the top 10 conservatories in the US, our acting program is phenomenal, very competitive. And our School of Music does focus on jazz, blues, really thinking about the Chicago music as well as classical as well. Um, and then of course, you know, our College of Business was the first in Chicago and it was one of the first 10 in the US. It is located in downtown Chicago. So these top three colleges and then these bottom two are located in downtown Chicago. And when thinking about downtown, you're thinking of Fortune 500 companies, right? You're thinking of these huge places. So that's why these colleges are going to be there. Our College of Computing and Digital Media is our fastest growing college with film and television as our most popular program. So for those of you that want to 
study film and television and you want to be on a production studio already your freshman year, um, we're a great choice. We have a lot at Cinespace. Cinespace is the largest production studio outside of LA. It's in Chicago and DePaul is the only school to have a lot there. Um, and it's, you know, amazing, fascinating stuff. And they help you get your union license and everything and really getting filming. And they have the LA quarter as well. If you wanted to go and work Hollywood on set your senior year and take classes out there. Um, of course, our liberal arts, our college of science and health, we do, we are partnered with Rosalind Franklin Medical School. So if you are thinking about, you know, being going on to medical school, we have several different partnerships and programs with them accelerated three plus programs. So these are all going to be great options. Um, we have more than 300 academic programs. So definitely so many majors that I wish I could talk about them all, but a lot of our students, you know, have a major, double majors, minors. And like I said, you're going to be in really small classrooms because our average is, is smaller as well. Um, you know, I can talk about facts all day, but something I really want to focus on is our success rate. Every year, it's more than 90% of our students go on to full-time employment, grad school, law school, med school, and that's because just being in the city of Chicago, your internship opportunities are right across the street. They're right next door, and that really helps the students and especially DePaul's reputation in, in the city. We also want you to just be involved, right? You'll hear DePaulians say the city is your classroom. Our students are so involved, not just in internships, but classes, service. Our DePaul is very active in the city. And that's because, you know, we're not in the suburbs, we're not in the outskirts, we're in the center of everything. Our College of Business, their address is one East Jackson Boulevard. So literally in the center of Chicago. Um, and we have so many different opportunities, right? We have a great alumni network. Richard Dreerhouse, who we named our College of Business after, is one of, you know, Chicago's most successful businessmen. He's an alumni. So definitely a lot to kind of choose for and, and look through and having those opportunities. And really thinking about application, we are on the Common App. Um, we are also, we have no application fee. We have been test optional since 2012. So it's definitely something that's not new to us. And I can once again talk forever about test scores and, and what I think about them, but we really, you know, how you work in high school, what classes you're taking, that's really what we're going to focus on. Um, and these are some of our deadlines too. And just keeping in mind for those of you interested in the School of Music or the theater school, checking in with them because they do have a very different application process, depending on what you're thinking about your major. But if you ever have any questions, I will drop my information in the chat as well. So feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to you. Um, you know, I used to live in Chicago. I'm a very proud double demon, both my bachelor's and master's, and now I live in the DFW area. So I can definitely connect with you all. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Brenda, for sharing with more about DePaul. Our next school will be James Madison University. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, I love getting to hear from all these other schools. Uh, and I know we can start to sound similar, but I'll tell you the thing that's gonna make JMU most unique tonight is we're located in Virginia. We're one of the public universities in Virginia. By Virginia standards, we're on the larger side. We have about 20,000 undergraduate students. Average class size though is only around 25 and our student to faculty ratio is about 16 to one. So we like to say you've got the resources of the big public university, but still that feeling of a small college academically, where you get to know your professors and they get to know you. We are division one of the NCAA for all of our varsity sports. We've also got club sports and intramural sports. So all three levels of interaction. A Couple other quick facts, um, talking about freshman retention rate, we've got high freshman retention rate. We also have a very high post-grad employment rate. In fact, it's the number one post-grad employment rate of any school in Virginia. So we're really proud of that. Within six months after graduation, about 96% of our alumni are either employed full time or in grad school or doing something related to their field of study. So again, we're really proud to see what our amazing alums are doing. But of course, if you're coming to college, you're there to study. So let's talk a little bit about academics. Split up amongst all the colleges you see listed on your screen, we have about 164 different majors, minors, programs of study concentrations. Um, as a very proud JMU alum, I can tell you that my degree from JMU is in communication studies. I had a concentration in public relations with a minor in human resource development. 
So that's just a lot of words that mean I'm a people person and I wanted to make sure that that's the career path that I was taking while I was a student at JMU. But no matter what you're going to study at JMU, there are a lot of opportunities for hands-on learning. Remember, again, I said you have those small class sizes, so you really do get the opportunity to develop good working relationships with your faculty members. A lot of opportunity for undergraduate research starting as early as second semester of freshman year. Uh, if you're going into the health sciences, you've got practicum and clinical experiences, student teaching for our education students, whatever is relevant to the field of study, we want to make sure you get that hands-on opportunity to number one, make sure you are happy with that major and you want to do it. And number two, it builds up your resume. A lot of our students will double major or add minors and concentrations, so that's pretty common. Typically, those are going to be more related fields, but one of my favorite stories was a young man I met two years ago. He was just graduated from JMU. He came to JMU and he was really passionate about two things, so he didn't want to choose, so he double majored in chemistry and musical theater. None of his major classes overlapped, um, so I don't know when he had time to do anything besides go to class and do his homework, but he, again, he was passionate about the sciences and the arts, and he didn't want to choose, so he was able to pursue both. He was a member of our honors college, so for his honors thesis, he actually wrote a musical about chemistry. In fact, if you Google bondedthemusical.com, you can actually see the staged reading of it. And then one of his good friends was a media arts and design major at JMU with a film studies concentration. So they got together and adapted his musical script into a screenplay for her senior thesis. And they actually had it premiere at a film festival in DC right after graduation and showed it a couple other places. So we're big on the interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary opportunities here at JMU. So let's talk about the application process. Our application is online and our focus is really on your academics. So the only thing you have to submit to apply to JMU is the application itself and your official high school transcript. And that's because I'm going to be looking at your classes to see did you challenge yourself in your core subject areas based on what your high school offers. So if that means advanced placement or international baccalaureate or concurrent or dual enrollment or honors, if your high school offers that, I want to see that on your transcript. If your high school doesn't offer that, that's okay. I still want to see that you challenged yourself in the core subjects based on what you had. And then we look at your grades, not your GPA, but your actual final grades, literally counting up how many A's, how many B's, how many, many other letter grades. Competitive applicants to JMU are going to have mostly A's and B's. Of course, we're taking into account what the last year and a half has done to academic records, and we're, we're going to, we factor that in and we make adjustments for that. We've also been test optional for quite some time, not quite as long as my colleague, but since 2017. And so we've stopped using standardized test scores for admission purposes, and we don't require it for admission into the Honors College or for any of our merit-based scholarships. So truly test optional. The only exception would be if you're one of our recruited athletes, and that's an NCAA requirement. Um, so that, that doesn't even have to come through the admissions office. Uh, we also don't factor intended major in, so it's okay if you come in undecided. We've got a core set of general education classes you're going to take no matter what your major is. You've got three different applications you can choose from next year. This is kind of brand new information. We've got our own JMU specific application. We're also on the coalition and starting next year we will be on the Common App. So whichever application form you want to use is fine with us. Application deadlines you see on your screen were specific to this year. We made some adjustments based on the pandemic. Um, so keep an eye out on deadlines next year. I expect they might shift back. Um, we'll be flexible, but just make sure you pay attention to the website for deadlines. So in terms of location, I already told you guys we're in Virginia. We are in the Shenandoah Valley. So we're about two hours by car from Washington, DC and about two hours by car from Richmond, Virginia, um, which is the capital. It's a gorgeous part of the state to be in. We've got the Blue Ridge Mountains on one side, the Allegheny Mountains on the other. Lots of opportunity for outdoors. Um, we are far enough south that we don't get a lot of snow in the winter, but we do have a ski resort 20 minutes away. They make a lot of their own snow, but it's kind of nice. Um, so we definitely do get all four seasons here. Kind of a fun fact about JMU, we are the most Instagram location in all of Virginia because hello, our campus is beautiful. So we wanna document it as much as we can. It's also pretty easy to get to and from campus, whether you're flying in and out of DC or there's a regional airport about 20 minutes from our campus. Um, so again, easy to get to and from. Please, please, please feel free to contact me at any point. I am your admissions counselor, um, and I'm sad that I wasn't able to come visit many of you guys in, at your high schools this year. So you're welcome to email me, call me. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom or phone call with me. Um, we've got lots of virtual options for visitation. We've also got some in-person options starting back up again. So we look forward to sharing more about JMU with you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Erin, for sharing James Madison.
We have now reached the halfway point. We've had three great schools present. We have three to go. So for our attendees, this is a great time to think of those questions for the Q&A. Just remember you can direct them to a specific school or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to weigh in on. So either way, it is a great way to start getting some questions answered. And also everyone will be sharing their contact information so you can grab that and follow up later. All right, our next school will be Quincy University. Hey everybody, thanks for having us. I, I completely agree with Aaron. It's so fun to do these and hear about other colleges. It kind of makes me jealous. I wanna go back to college and do this all over again. So my name is Dominic O'Donnell. I'm the Associate Director for Admissions with Quincy University. Um, Quincy, uh, we are a small private Catholic Franciscan University. Uh, about a thousand students. We're located in Quincy, Illinois, where if you're looking for it on a map, we are right on the Mississippi River. Uh, if you've ever heard of Mark Twain in Hannibal, Missouri, we're about 20 minutes up the, the road. But if you try to find us in the map, Chicago's four and a half hours, St. Louis is two hours, Kansas City's three and a half hours. Make that triangle and you'll run right into Q-Town, uh, the gem city of Western Illinois. So a little bit about Quincy University. Um, what, like I said, we are a Franciscan liberal arts school. So we offer 40 different majors. Um, they really range from everything from your, you know, your pre-professionals, your pre-med, your pre-law, your pre-PTs, um, you know, through communications. Some of the more unique programs, we offer a direct admit nursing uh, program, which is, uh, we've had a lot of success with it. Um, we also offer aviation, which is not a lot of tiny schools uh, offer that. So it's pretty neat to have pilots coming really from all four corners of the country to, to go through our aviation program. Uh, a couple of things that make us unique, we, we have this philosophy called success by design, which we really create an individual success plan for every student that walks in the door. It's, it's really kind of a twofold. One is connecting students with advisors immediately for the program that they're looking to study. Um, it's all professors that, that teach our classes. So the advisors are also all professors, but also uh, every student gets a success coach. So you have the advisors that are really working on the academic piece and kind of showing the light at the end of the tunnel for students to, you know, what's going to happen over the next four years and where am I going to go? Am I going to get into a doctorate program or grad school or go in the job market? Um, but we also have the success coaches, which do more of the tender love and care piece, which are really the first people that kind of put their wing around students and help them get into clubs and organizations, help them kind of navigate those waters as you're transitioning from high school to freshman uh, into freshman year and, and really just making sure that you know, every dream the student has coming into college is going to be able to be fulfilled. So we started that model about five years ago, and it's it's been absolutely awesome to to watch. Um, the uh, we're part of Common App. Uh, we also have our own in-house application. Um, as as many of you heard, you know, we were in the same way with. Um, well, I guess some of my colleagues on this panel they had had the test optional for a while. We actually were one of the schools that pivoted to it due to the, you know, the coronavirus, but it's something that has worked, you know, just so well that, you know, we're gonna continue with it going in the future. Um, I think you hear from everybody and I think there's a little kind of question and answer at the end of this, but I think the one thing to really stress during the application process for students that are getting ready, contact us as your admissions counselors. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to help whether it's finding that perfect fit at our respective universities or whether that's just helping you navigate the, the process and to find that perfect fit for you. So um, you'll hear that from all of us, but, but definitely reach out if there's anything we can help. Um, a couple other little things about, about Quincy. Um, one of them is our Quest program. So the Quest program is where all of our tutoring resources are housed as well as experiential learning, uh, leader, like experiential learning and leadership opportunities on campus. Um, we also built in this thing called Quest Dollars. So just by going to QU, you're going to accumulate $500 of Quest cash every year that you're there. Those are things to provide opportunities if you want to do study abroad, or if you want to do one of our service trips, or if you want to take on one of the, the trips to a different country that's attached to a class. Or even if you get to the end of the, the line and you're into a senior year and you, you have decided not to do study abroad or, or use that, you can use that for your academic symposium or you can use that as research funds. So it's just kind of a neat way to keep students in, engaged and not have to worry about some of the financial burdens because it's already being built in. Um, uh, we're NCAA Division II athletics. Uh, not many schools our size are playing D2. It, it makes it exciting for, for game days. We always sort of have little guy syndrome whenever we show up on the field. Um, and then we're actually Division I in, in volleyball. Uh, so um, 
again, you'll hear this from my colleagues. I think the best thing to do for prospective student athletes, uh, it's always helpful to reach out to us in admissions and let us kind of help navigate to getting a hold of the coaches and uh, what the next steps are. Um, uh, a little bit about the city. Uh, so Quincy, Illinois is about 40,000 people. Uh, it is the economic hub of that part of the state. So um, we have more internships available than we have students to, to fill them. And that really ranges from, you know, having the Center for Medicine and the Center uh, for Law of the area, but also having, you know, two TV stations that broadcast out of Quincy and really kind of having such a solid economic structure that, you know, I always tell students, we look good when you look good. So, you know, making sure that you have the resume uh, built to go onto that job market, to get into those, those graduate programs. Uh, so ultimately it's a reflection back on us. Um, Mascots the Hawk and our school is founded by Francis and Friars, which if you're not aware of wear the long brown robes. So, I mean, 80% of my wardrobe is brown. Uh, I would say probably 95% of the wardrobe of our students are brown. Uh, you better just get ready to, to rock a lot of um, not the normal school colors. Uh, and that's that about wraps up Quincy University. Um, I'll put my information down in the, the chat box. Um, again, we just encourage our, our, you know, any student that's, that's possibly interested to reach out. Um, let us do the work for you. Uh, we get paid to basically do the best job in the world. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dominic, for sharing Quincy with all of us. And I echo that. Admission councils are the best. So students, you should definitely be reaching out and building those relationships, asking questions. Um, our next school today is going to be the University of, of Illinois at Chicago. Darby? Hey, y'all. My name is Darby, and I'm with the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, you'll all be hearing from um, my flagship school right after me with Urbana-Champaign, but I am located directly in Chicago. Um, as you can see here, uh, the big Waffle Building right there is um, one of our big buildings on campus. Um, and you can see the lake from this view. Uh, you can also see our brand new student residence hall right on the lower part of this photo um, with that little red UIC symbol there. Um, it duels as a residence hall as well as um, within the building we have study units as well. So we're pretty excited about that. So to get a better picture of where we're at, this is that whole red part there. It's about a two, two and a half block radius. Um, you can walk side to, or um, from where you are here on there is if you would be at our Student Center East. Um, from there to the opposite side of campus will probably take you about 15, 20 minute walks and not terribly bad. Uh, we also have um, the public transit system, as you can see there, uh, the loop, um, the blue line, UIC has a stop all on its own called UIC Halstead. So uh, you can fly into O'Hare, get on the blue line and that'll take your right to um, UIC Halstead, it's about a 35 minute train ride, maybe 45 if you uh, hit some rush hour traffic, depending. Um, but we are really close to a lot of different areas. Uh, if you're a foodie like myself, we butt up to Little Italy. Um, you have Pilsen just to the south of us and you have Greek town just north. Um, and then even better to uh, the east of you, uh, about a mile and a half, you have uh, Lake Michigan. So even with that, uh, if you've all have heard of Lollapalooza, which is that music festival that happens at Millennium Park, as you can see there where the bean is, um, Someone called, um, it's called the, the cloud as well. Some people like to call it too. So um, fun things about where our location is at. Some bragging rights as we all have as institutions. Um, we are ranked number 52 for best um, public colleges by US, and News, by US News and World Report. Um, also most transformative by Money Magazine and then we're top 10 for best value. Um, to kind of continue with those bragging rights as well, we are um, incredibly diverse. So um, we were ranked uh, in the top five by US News and World Report for being most diverse. We pull from a lot of different pockets um, within the Chicagoland area. Um, so with that, we have about 40% first generational students on campus. 33% uh, of our students are multilingual. We have about 57 different languages spoken and about 60 different countries represented on campus as well. Um, and on top of that, we do not have any ethnic or cultural majority amongst the student body. So that's something that we really like to hone in on um, 
being an institution within the city limits of Chicago. Along with that, um, within the university itself, we do have about 21,600 students, so just shy of, uh, of that 22,000 range. 35% uh, of those classes are under 20 students and 80% are under the 50 students. So you're not going to get those large 100, 200 person lecture halls um, with that 19 to one student to faculty ratio. We do like to keep it nice and personal and, and you will get to know your professors and your TAs are there to assist you as well. Um, Another thing on top of that, UIC is a research institution. So we do get about $400 million in research funding being an R1 institution. Uh, we're ranked in the top 200 um, for being one of the world-class research institutions in the world as well in being Chicago's number one public research institution on top of that. So you're able to step into um, a lot of different opportunities. Uh, we also have an innovation center, what we call the I Center, um, as well as an electronic visualization lab. Um, the electronic visualization lab is actually pretty cool. When uh, the uh, Death Star was being created for Star Wars, UIC actually um, allowed the movie makers to utilize our electronic visualization lab. So kind of one of our fun facts that we like to share about uh, UIC. So on to some more of those nitty gritty important details UIC and how to apply to us. Uh, we are on the common application. It is a $60 application fee. However, we do accept fee waivers as well. Uh, we do take official transcripts and we are test optional. Um, what we're looking for are grade trends um, as well as the strength of your schedule and letters of recommendation as well. Um, the personal statement is something that uh, we take great consideration in as well. Um, important details about that would be early action for us, uh, things to remember with early action and early decision. Early action is not binding, early decision is. So with early action for us, um, if you apply by November 1st, you will hear back by December 1st with a decision. If you've been admitted or not, you have until May 1st to um, intent to enroll with us or accept Accept your admission with UIC saying, sure, I'll give it a shot. Um, we do not have a uh, deposit fee. It is free for you to accept your spot there and it is saving your spot. Um, regular decision is February 1st. However, you can also, um, we have extended to April 1st. So if you have any further questions, I will put my information in the box or you can reach us at admissions at uic.edu. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Darby, for presenting on the University of Illinois at Chicago. Our next school tonight will be the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Hi, everyone. My name is Jill Davis, and I am Senior Regional Representative for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I am the Texas representative, so I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I serve all of Texas. So I will be your point of contact if you have any interest or questions about Illinois moving forward. Um, let me get where we can move forward. There we go. Uh, Illinois is the flagship institution in the state of Illinois. Um, we are located in Champaign-Urbana, which is in central Illinois. Illinois. We're about two and a half, almost three hours directly south of Chicago. We're a nice, comfortable college town. Um, we're actually categorized as a micro urban environment because we have all of the amenities of big city life with the luxury of a small, comfortable, safe town, safe community feel. Um, as we are the flagship institution in the state, we are a large public tier one research institution. Uh, we have over 50,000 students total on campus with a large undergraduate population. Although we are large, we feel that we do a good job of serving our students at our size with a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one and 80% of the courses that we offer having 50 students or less. Um, so we really want you to feel at home at Illinois and we work hard to do that. We are fairly diverse. We're ranked number one for most students of color among top 100 Midwest universities. We have all 50 states represented on campus, and this year we have 113 countries represented. Our students are highly involved. 68% of our undergraduate students are participating in research on campus, and that research can begin as early as your freshman year. 
And we have over 1800 student organizations and clubs on campus, everything from the squirrel watching club to the dipping things in chocolate club to underwater hockey. And yes, they really do play hockey underwater. So like if that's your jam, you can do it with us at Illinois. I think that's what makes the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign really special is that we are a large academically focused institution, but it's easy to find your people, your place, and your home on campus. Overall, we are ranked actually this year the number 15 under uh, university in the United States by US News and World Report, and the number two best college town in the US. We have over 150 majors across our 11 academic communities. We are best known for engineering. First and foremost, the Granger College of Engineering houses some of the top ranked programs in the world. Um, the Granger College is the number six ranked undergraduate program in the nation. We have 14 um, undergraduate engineering degrees, 13 of which are ranked in the top five of their respective categories. We also offer 14 computer science and computer science related programs on campus. So a ton of ways to specialize and personalize your technology degree with us at Illinois. We're also very well known for business. The Gies College of Business is the number nine ranked program nationally, and it houses the number two ranked accounting program at, an under, at the undergraduate level. Um, really, though, we have shining star programs across all of our disciplines, including our number seven ranked undergraduate psychology program. We have the number 23 ranked media studies program, and that's a worldwide ranking. And then we also have the number one ranked information sciences program at the graduate level. And we've actually opened that up at the undergraduate level as well. So really amazing academic programs here. When students do apply to Illinois, they are applying directly to the major that they want to study. So you do have to declare your major on your application. You'll be able to select a first choice major and a second choice major, and you will be admitted for the specific major that you want to study at Illinois. In terms of our review, review process, we do conduct holistic reviews for all of our applicants. What you see before you are our middle 50% ranges for SAT, ACT, and GPA. That GPA is a 4.0 scale, unweighted and academic courses only. This is our middle 50% range, so for admitted students, so 25% of the students that we admitted were below these ranges and 25% were above, but this is that middle section. When we're reviewing your application, we'll be first and foremost looking at your academics, making sure you took advantage of the rigor that was offered to you at your high school, and making sure that you have strong performance in those courses. We did go test optional for fall 2021 applicants. We have not yet released the information on whether or not we'll be test optional for the following year but stay tuned. I'm sure that announcement is coming soon. Um, so, but we did encourage students to submit their test scores if they felt it was a good representation of their academic ability. We do look at extracurriculars and then we would do require at least one supplemental essay. A couple points of Illini success. We are currently ranked number one in the Big Ten Academic Alliance for best return on investment. Throughout the course of a year, we bring well over 11,000 unique employers to our campus to recruit our students, and that includes normally about 86 of the Fortune 100 companies and about 47 of the global 100 companies on our campus actively recruiting our students. 59 of the Fortune 100 companies conducted in-person interviews on our campus last year. We also have one of the largest living alumni networks in the nation with well over 470,000 alums, many of which are located here in Texas. We have thriving alumni networks in Dallas, Houston, Austin, and a few in San Antonio as well. So a few alumni across the state that you can connect with and that will help you find success. Here's my information. Again, I am the senior Texas regional representative located in DFW. I would love to be your point of contact for any and all questions that you have. Thanks so much for joining us tonight and IOL. Thank you so much, Jill, for sharing more about the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. We do have a few minutes left together before we wrap up. So I would love to um, invite each of our presenters to turn their cameras back on to come back as a group. And we're gonna have time for a Q&A question. Um, also for our attendees, this is a great chance to make sure you're grabbing that contact information from the chat. So you have that to follow up after uh, tonight's event. And also if there is a last question you wanna drop in the Q&A, please feel free to add it in there um, for us. All right, so the question that uh, we are going to um, get started with tonight is, what is your 
favorite event or campus uh, tradition, something that really gives a um, you know taste of that student experience for our attendees and those watching to uh, experience. So um, we'll start with Bradley University. We're going to go in the same order that you all presented in originally. And when the person ahead of you finishes, just unmute your mic and go right ahead. Um, probably one of my favorite activities on campus is late night BU. Um, we do this, it's kind of um, a school carnival for college kids, right? So we do all sorts of fun things. Um, one time they had camel rides, we'll have um, ice skating, lots of food, lots of entertainment, bands playing, all sorts of things. And we do it once a month in our recreation center and it's free for all our students. Yeah, I would definitely have to say Fest. It's a concert only for DePaul students and it's on our quad. Um, tickets are only $10, but the best part about it, it's essentially just a concert, um, but actually the student body gets to vote who comes. So honestly, it really depends on who's at DePaul at the time. When I was at DePaul, we were very much into like EDM, hip hop, you know, so we had like Big Sean, Diplo, of course, Chance come. Um, but just a couple of years ago, for some reason, everyone was very, I don't know, nostalgic and they voted for like T-Pain and Jesse McCartney. So it's really cool because you're on the quad. So you're literally like super close to the artist and it's only DePaul students, which is like a fun time. This is one of my favorite questions to hear everyone answer to. Um, so at JMU, probably my favorite tradition, I'm going to go sports related in football. Anytime we score, whether it's the full touchdown, the extra point, safety, um, kicking a field goal, we throw purple and gold streamers. And it is a sight to see in a stadium with 25,000 fans throwing streamers down. It makes a huge mess. Other schools get mad at us when we show up at their stadiums with streamers. In fact, they may have been banned by some places, but it's one of our big traditions and we love it. I would go with for Quincy University, we've got uh, our Hawk Wild celebration, which happens the weekend before finals. Uh, so we just basically stop school work entirely. Everybody divvies up into teams of about eight to 10 students. And it's literally three games of three days of like challenges and games and ridiculousness. And I mean, it was awesome when I was a student. And now it's equally as awesome to watch it, uh, you know, from a distance to see the kids enjoy. Uh, one of our best ones would be uh, called Spark, and it's called Spark at the Park, and it's an annual fall festival. Um, so we've had performances uh, from Nick Jonas, 21 Pilots, Kendrick Lamar, um, and so it just happens every fall. All students, faculty, and staff are invited. Um, it aims to bring local, national, and little-known and well-known artists to campus. I don't know if this is my favorite tradition forever, but it's something that's been kind of on my mind recently because I don't know if you guys have been watching college basketball, but Illinois is doing okay. We're currently ranked number three in the nation. It's fine. Um, so what I love, of course, we have a lot of school spirit for football, but I think in the Midwest, you really have that drive for basketball quite a bit. Um, at our games, we have a student section there called the Orange Crush. And I've never seen so many bodies painted orange in my life, head to toe. Um, and it's just super fun. The students get so into it. I love that school spirit and like camaraderie that you get when you're at a game and you're winning, best part. But I love the orange crush and the spirit that they bring. It's one of my favorite things about our student body. I agree with Erin. I love this question. I love everyone's answers. And I hope that for everyone watching, maybe it inspires you to go look up these events, Google it on the websites and see, because um, it can give you a moment to think, oh, could I see myself there doing this? Um, which is a great way to envision yourself off at college. So we are reaching the end of our time together tonight. First of all, I want to thank all of our panelists you not just rep, uh, representing your schools in terms of facts and figures and those nuts and bolts of admissions, but really the passion you have for your student experience in and out of the classroom. For all of our attendees that are watching um, and anyone watching later, we hope that you and your families will reach out to these representatives. They are here as your guides. They're here to answer your questions and help you navigate this process and are your best, best resource. Um, now for 
all of you when you finish tonight, there's going to be a quick link, um, just a little link to a quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for Texas students. We hope that you'll sign up for additional sessions to learn more about great schools. Also in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording to watch again, or any of the other session recordings for the panels as well, not just the six by six events, but the uh, college search process panels. So check those out. To register for more, to watch these videos, go to strivescan.com slash Texas. Again, thank you everyone for spending part of your day with us. We really appreciate it and wanna wish you the very best of luck in your college search and decision journey. Thanks again and good night.